pictures here. Uh, we finished through that. We're going to go through our affirmation of the week. I like to do that every week. Last week's was, ooh, I needed that commitment. So um, this week, we've got our I am driven uh, affirmation of the week. Speak that out loud. I am driven. Um, and what, what drives you is really what you need to know. And that'll keep you in the game, right? Whatever your why is. I know Tanil likes to say your why should make you cry. Um, so make sure that whatever it is that's your driving force, um, that we're speaking that into existence and we're making sure that we're going forward in everything that we want to do um, and accomplish and, and these goals that we're setting. We have to continuously create new goals in the midst of the goals that we are in. So I am driven. Some of the ones that we've had over the past weeks that I still find to be valuable and you can use these same affirmations throughout this week as well because you're going to need them trading in the Forex. <laughs> Patience. Um, I am patient. I am studious. You need to have the ability to learn and want to learn continuously. As long as you're in the academy, you should be utilizing the academy. So I've been in almost two months now, and I'm still utilizing the academy. Um, be consistent, uh, confident, and committed. I am driven. All right. Um, so what are some things to consider when you're trading? Um, do you have a trading plan? So we do provide a trading plan for everyone, um, as well as a spreadsheet. Uh, the trading plan we set up within our team, you don't necessarily have to do it, but we do have the SK5, um, and that helps you take profit right now, right? So you can go in within the next week, get on your demo, and start to utilize the SK5 method on our trading sessions that are in the mornings. And in the future, we'll be having more trading sessions where you can utilize that same uh, plan. There's also going to be the compounding sheets. So if you haven't received the compounding sheet, um, let us know. It's in the group chat, but if you uh, weren't there when it was sent last, just let us know. We'll resend that so it uh, shows up in your files. Um, but that is a compounding plan that allows us to know what our PIP goal is, what our risk management is, what we're trying to grow so we can see our accounts grow over time. Um, so do you have a trading plan? We do have that within our team. I know last night we had the call and he was talking about his trading plan, um, Gilberto's, and I thought that was awesome. So I wanted to just bring up that we do have one as well. Make sure that you're utilizing that. Um, what trading session are you trading in? Uh, this is super important. You need to understand that the Sydney Australian market starts at 5 p.m. every day. Um, it ends at 2 a.m. Know that your Tokyo market, so Japan, that's going to be at 7 p.m. So that evening, like right now, if you're trading, the best things to trade is going to be your um, – Odd and NZD and your JPY pairs right now. Can y'all hear me? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, yep, I got you. I'll get you that uh, compounding sheet. Um, it's like I said, it should be in there, but I think we found out that it's not all all there for everyone. So, um, so yeah, in this time frame. Sydney uh, market. So this is right now, all in ZD, JPY in the evenings. If you work days, you need to be looking at these. Maybe you make your pairs that you watch more often, the pairs in, the, in which the times that you will be trading in. Okay. Um, so which currency pairs are volatile during the times you're trading? It's, it means it's a higher volume of orders. Those, those markets are open. Those banks are running. We all know that the banks are the major market participants. So obviously, we want to know whether or not there's any bank holidays as well, because um, that's going to impact whether or not some of these sessions are moving and have that high volume of orders. We want a high volume of orders because that means there's more opportunities for us to take profit. Um, either in a buy or a sell because there will be price action when the prices are moving. Okay, so uh, my favorite session, the London session. So from 3 a.m. to 11 a.m., you can catch a lot of pips. Um, get up, get up, get up. If you ain't working overnight, <laughs> get up and get the money. That's all I'm going to say. Um, GBP, Euro, Chef, um, those are the ones you really want to look at in that session. But um, and you can also, with this being an overlap of the New York market, you can definitely look at the USD and CAD as well in conjunction with 
the GBP euro and the chef. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you start trading some of these other pairs and they're not paired with one of these during these sessions, they're going to be a heck of a lot slower. So like an odd NZD in the London market is probably not the best idea, right? Whereas like a NZD, a Euro NZD might be because Europe is in, um, in market. So just keep that in mind. Um, at least one of the pairs within, I mean, one of the currencies within your pair needs to be in market and open in that session, right? So you can trade them at any time, but it would only make sense to trade them within the sessions. Any questions on that? No. I have none. Okay. All right, cool. So find your favorite time. The money will uh, move you towards your favorite time. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Um, so trade ideas. Y'all will see trade ideas come out from educators, you will see trade ideas come out from um, some of the chairmen and things of that nature in different groups. You'll just see trade ideas. So you need to understand how to take trade ideas. I will tell you from our team, we will not be providing you all of this. And the reason why is we don't wanna be your um, crutch, I guess necessarily. We want you to go and seek out that knowledge and understand what your stop loss is, your take profit is, and your entry price. And it really is based on your own risk management. So if you are in the daily pips group, you will not see prices listed, entry prices, stop loss, or take profit. We're gonna give you the um, pair as an idea, and we're gonna tell you whether it's a buy or a sell. And what you should do with that information is go to your trading view, or go to your harmonics and find that pair and find out whether or not you agree, first of all, that it's going in a buy or sell because not everybody is accurate. And then if it is going in that, when do you want to enter it? So how do you figure out whether or not you want to enter a trade or exit a trade is going to be dependent on your style and method of trading. So um, pick an educator. Um, and a lot of those educators will tell you what they expect, what are their checklists of things they need in order to enter a trade. Um, so just keep that in mind. You need to find out what your checklist is. And when you get a trade idea, go through your checklist. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, it hits this, this, this. Okay, I'm going to enter the trade. And once you're doing that, then you will also have looked at what your entry price is, your stop loss, take profit. So again, this is, this is something that you'll get a hang of once you have your checklist down packed. When you get a trade idea, make sure you put it in pretty soon, right? Those trade ideas are not, I mean, they might not be good after an hour, okay? What if someone was, they were expecting the market execute right then in that moment and you saw it 30 minutes later? Well, you definitely need to go look at your chart and see if that is still something that is even a possibility. Because at this point, it could that opportunity could have passed you. There's plenty of other opportunities. Stay away from that trade. Matter of fact, trade ideas, I would say never just take that at face value. Always um, come up with your own, take profits. But you will see those given out. So keep that in mind. Um, on the From your app on the phone, make sure you change this to the pair that you want to trade, okay? If you're on a different chart and you press trade from there, it's gonna bring up the pair that you were on for that chart. So, so please keep that in mind. Uh, look up there and see, was I even on the right chart? If you're in a really quick rush to put in a trade, don't even put it in. <laughs> I mean, you can put it in, but definitely think about it because you will drop the wrong trade in. And I'm gonna tell you what, if you put the wrong trade in and the numbers is completely off, it's not gonna let you do it anyways. But um, let's not, uh, let's not get in the habit of not looking there. Um, the next thing you want to look at is whether or not you're doing market execution or um, a pending order. Uh, this is not Meta. Yeah, this is MetaTrader 4, but it's the mobile app. This is the mobile app. And this is the mobile app on iPhone. So I don't know if you got Android. It might not look the same. But this is the iPhone version of it. And um, MT4, I actually, this is one thing I changed up today. I decided to add in a picture of the MetaTrader from the desktop. So I'll show you guys that in a minute. 
um, because I think that it's beneficial. I know for me, um, I trade from both constantly. I may be on my laptop looking at trading view, then I'm jumping over into my desktop app to, you know, trade, or then maybe I'm looking on my phone and doing it. So they're all, you, you need to know how to utilize them all. You never know where you'll be when you need to jump in a trade. That's true, Kwanis, because I got so accustomed to looking at the MetaTrader on my computer that when I started looking at it on my phone, it looked boring. Yeah, and um, you can mark up your chart on your phone, too. Now, I know it might seem like it's going to be a little bit much, but um, sometimes what you'll find is for me, I may at least put support and resistance lines on there so that I can see it at a quick glance when I look at my um, MetaTrader 4 app on my phone. Mind you, TradingView has an app, a mobile app. So really, you could just hop over to TradingView, look at what you already charted on your laptop, right? And then um, go back to MetaTrader 4 from, your app, from the phone. So I do that too. And I really like that because then you have put the time in maybe a day before, two days before to mark your chart up and when the opportunity presents itself, you're ready. You can look right on your phone from wherever you are in the world, you know, because I'm going to be sitting on a beach tray and soon. So I'm going to be taking these little calls from the beach. And this ain't so much But no, I'm not. Um, so, yeah, this is definitely, I think that's a good, um, a good observation. Um, let me go down to this next one. So I wanted to talk about pending orders today because I know this is the question every week that I'm like, I got to get better at answering this for y'all. I know what it is when I do it, but it's hard to explain. So I found some pictures um, that I felt like were uh, better at explaining exactly what's happening in the, with the price when you go to put in your pending order. Now, um, some of these ideas that we give you may be market execution. They may be buy limits, buy stops, sell stops. You know, this is going to be up to you with how you decide to enter. Remember that. So um, if you're not sure or for certain that you want to go in market entry and you want price to get to a certain place first, that's when you're looking at a pending order. Okay. With the pending orders for a buy limit, you're saying this price is coming down from out of a sale, right? It's coming from up high and it's going to reach this area. And this could be an area of support that you have defined or something of that nature, but you know that price is going to reverse and go into a buy. So you place your pending order here and you say, buy at this limit. Once it gets here, I want to buy up. Okay. Once the price reaches this limit, I want to buy up. So for the sale, same thing. It's in a buy going up towards a price ceiling, right? So an area of resistance. And you're saying, okay, I know that resistance is coming. I don't think price is going to break that. I want to place my pending order, my sell limit here, knowing that this is getting ready to reverse once it gets there. Okay. I'm expecting it to reverse, so therefore I'm placing it here, even though price is here. Okay, so I'm expecting price to come up to here and then come down. So a buy stop, a buy stop, the order is placed above the price and keeps going up. So this is already in a buy. You're just trying to probably um, hop in at a certain area because you want to make sure that it's absolutely going to possibly cross over um, that that resistance and once you do once it does okay you're like all right boom there's my price my order is going to go in and it's going to continue to buy up the sell stop is similar it's just coming down price is already in a sale or going down and once it gets to your price you want it to lock you into that trade and continue down okay now what can happen and this is why you need to make sure it's at areas of support and resistance is that it's not just bouncing off and so now you done got up in that trade and it went the opposite direction. That's when you need what? A stop loss. You're gonna need a stop loss. Um, always put a stop loss in on your pending orders and on your market entry uh, orders. Um, so again, you wanna make sure that says buy limit, sell limit, buy stop or sell stop. If not, then it's market execution. Am I missing something here? No. Okay. 
Um, so lot sizes. Okay, question. Any questions on this? Did that did that make sense? Because I know that this is the one thing I think everybody's like usually confused on. Y'all can say it out loud. Y'all can come off mute. It makes sense. I, I'm still kind of new to pendant orders. I usually just do market execution. But um, get used to these, it. though. You want to know why? Okay, so why is pendant orders like something that you should actually use um, a little bit more often? It's because you don't want to have to watch the trade until it's time for it to go in. I mean, even if you set an alert, you're then having to look at it right once it hits your alert on TradingView, and you're still trying to figure out if it's the right time to go in. Setting up pending orders allows you to say, okay, I already know where my area of support or resistance is, and I am confident that if it breaks through this area, then it will continue on in this direction. I will put my stop loss in. I'm going to put my take profit in and I'm going about my business for today. Right? I mean, the market execution is, is you got to pay attention a lot more to right when you're going to go in. And so what we're doing in the mornings, and I know that that is what we do is market execution in the morning. Why? Because the market is moving fast, first of all. Um, it's moving really fast. We want to catch those opportunities right then. Um, and normally we're going to be taking profit within the next 15 minutes to two hours, right? We want to be in the order and out the order in the next two hours. Um, whereas if you said, let's say your, your nights is normally where you're going to be able to trade at, and it's moving a little bit slower in the Asian market, wouldn't it make more sense to just put in a pending order and go to sleep? right? I don't want to sit here and wait until this price breaks that support or resistance. It's already low volume of orders, right? Because I'm in this session, but it's a slower market. So I use pending orders a lot throughout the day um, when I'm outside of the London session. Um, and market execution normally during high volatile times. Okay. I hope that makes sense. All right, so your lot sizes, your lot sizes. Um, man, Gerbolter did a great job last night. I wanted to give him up on like really explaining the pips and where to count them at. Um, if you don't know, we need you on that next Tuesday call because he broke it down, down. Um, but we all know it really starts with the decimals. And if you just do a simple subtraction of the um, of the prices that you see, you'll get the pips. It's going to be the um, third and fourth decimal anyways, um, and you'll see exactly what the difference is between the two. On, this is, uh, Fox, wait, how are you? Um, the other thing that you can do, uh, let me mute everybody. Uh, thank you so much for watching the information. And, uh, you know, um, what was I about to say? Hold on. Yeah, so the lot sizes, you can count the pips, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, so 10 cent per pip for this 0 0.01, uh, 50 cent per pip, 0 0.05. So that's not 5 cent per pip, that's 50 cents per pip. Um, it's 10, uh, this is going to be 0 0.1, and that's going to be $1 per pip. So they say go for like 25 pips, right? 25 um, pips on most trades. If you're going for 25 pips at a 0 0.1 lot size, you get $25 off of one trade, right? Um, a lot of times, though, you may end up getting 40 pips or right or something like that. So this could be 0.3, for example. 0.3 is going to be three dollars per pip. You get 40 pips, 30 times 40. I mean, three times 40. You know what I mean? You're starting to look at some nice, a nice chunk of change um, just by upping your lot size. And this, and this lot size, um, choosing lot sizes. Uh, you do have to choose one for every trade, and as you get more confident, you will go up in your lot sizes, um, knowing that you have done your due diligence and um, your educated um, analysis. So we got some people I know that like to drop the ones on there. I'm not there yet. That's the ten dollars per pip. Twenty five pips, two hundred fifty dollars. It's nice, right? Real nice. Um, 
and 25 pips it doesn't take that it's not that hard to get 25 pips if you haven't looked at the charts yet when you get there you'll see what i mean 25 pips can you can grab 25 pips in your sleep maybe more than that um so your risk management uh, if you're going to have a conservative trading style versus an aggressive trading style, um, if you're conservative and you have a 50 to $100 account, then you should be going 0 0.01, 0 0.02s. Um, if you're a little bit more aggressive, then you're at your 0 0.05, so you're doing 50 cents per pip. Still not bad. Still not bad. You're going to grow these accounts regardless, um, but just depends on how, how long it might take one from the other. And honestly, even if you're a conservative trader, if you trade more times than this person, you guys could have the same exact um, account, really, right? So just keep that in mind. As you start to build your account up, increase your lot size, right? Um, as you begin to build your confidence, increase your lot size. Um, but still don't go too crazy. Uh, never risk more than 3% per trade. Um, I would suggest 2%. Um, or yeah, 2%, 1% to 2%, maybe 3% at the max. Um, ah, so I, I added in something that I know I needed a little bit more uh, to hear about. So stop losses, man. Proper risk management starts with a stop loss. So what you're seeing on the left-hand screen, I told you I added a picture of, of the MetaTrader app from, I mean, not the app, but the desktop application. Um, it looks much different than the phone, um, from the phone. So if you have not utilized it yet, I was like, you know what, let me show you what that looks like. Um, so you're going to make sure that you choose again, your symbol here. Um, you need to make sure you choose when it says volume, that's your lot size. That's your lot. Same exact thing you're choosing on the top of your, uh, phone. This is your lot size. I know that was confusion for me. Like what's the volume? It's your lot. Um, stop loss, make sure that stop loss is in there. Even if you forget to put your take profit, you make sure you get a stop loss in. Um, this will not say instant, it'll say market execution. And then in the drop down, it'll also have pending orders as an option. Um, if you change it from like market execution to pending order and you had some information there or something like that, it will go away. You have to put it back in. So I'm gonna tell you what, don't put nothing in until you know for sure you chose your type first reason why I say that is because when you are in a rush and you really want to get this trade in right now um, and it's in some different format than you plan to put it in, well, now you just took a whole nother, I don't know, five minutes because you're like, oh, I got to put it back in again because it just erased it because I changed the type. All right. Um, one thing you can do as well when you're in here is modify orders. Uh, you can do the same thing on your phone. I don't have that up here to show you, but you can modify it. Just right click on the trade and modify. Okay. Um, if you're ready to close your order, you just press close here, or you can modify it by add, changing the take profit to wherever the price is at that moment or changing your, um, yeah, changing your time. And also you can bring your stop loss in to profit. So one to two risk to reward ratio. What do I mean by that? Um, give me a second, cause I'm getting ready to show y'all something on my trade. Do you ever, do you ever uh, market execute without putting the numbers in and then go right back and modify I it? I absolutely do that. <laughs> absolutely, I do it all the time. That's hey, I'm getting this money right now, y'all. This is my money right now I'm getting. Can you see my uh, screen? Y'all can see my Google Chrome? Or no. So why why didn't you call that in the signals in the signals? But see group? what was happening. Um, <laughs> I was on the call with people. So, anyways, yeah. let me tell y'all what I'm what reason why I'm coming here is not because I'm trying to show y'all that I'm making some money right now. <laughs> but I want to show y'all this uh this is called a, a risk to reward ratio. Okay. If you go over here, this short position is a short sale, right? So if y'all don't know what that means, short sale, y'all heard that a million times, probably short sale, that means it's short, we're selling. So it's a short position. So if I choose this short position and I put it down on here, like for example, what it does is, which y'all need all of that. What it does is I can say, okay, my price is gonna be at this level, right? That's where my price is gonna be. 
I want to put my stop loss somewhere around wherever it's going to be at. And then I want my take profit here. So what it does is if you read that, that's the number of pips from your entry down to your take profit. This is the number of pips from your entry to your stop loss. So let me show you what I did. I'm going to delete this one off and I'm going to just show you what mine looks like. So when I decided to enter this trade, I was waiting for it to break past this area of resistance. Okay. It was a strong area of resistance. So because I had been waiting on that, I placed my pending order. Again, it's a pending order. I put the pending order here and I said, once this breaks, this area, I want to go into this trade. So, right, we just talked about a sell, um, a sell stop, right? That's what this is. The price is already in a sale, right? And then I wanted it to come into my order and pick up my price. So it did. It picked my price up. I'm in the order, and then it continued down. Actually, what happened was I got in or somewhere around here. I ain't gonna lie. It went into my stop loss for a little while played and danced back up here when i thought it was going to go down there so um it wasn't bad though i mean it did a little bit of bouncing and then it came down into here so i'm actually expecting it to go i'm going 23 pips on this i'm doing basically close to a two percent risk to reward uh ratio okay and a 13 pip stop loss and you choose, you're going to choose this. Uh, the reason why I chose that one has a lot to do with another area of support and resistance I had identified. And I kind of just felt like it probably wouldn't go that further than that area if it did go back up. So, um, yeah, that's what I mean. Use this if you're going long, a long position, for example. Is If you say we, we identify here that the price was going to be going up into a buy well then you could just drop it here and say okay i'm going to get in after whatever these are my levels of support and resistance here so if i say that gold line which is the quarter theory is my support and resistance and i'm wanting to take this into a buy depending on where i decide my next level of support and resistance is right where price is going to stop is going to be dependent on what so i would have done 31 pips for the buy and gone into my stop loss. I would have made sure my stop loss was somewhere around here at two. So even if it had some wicks down there, it would not have gone into my, uh, not taking me out of the trade, right? So this is, again, let's say it got up to this area though, and I'm already in profit, you can move your stop loss. You can move your stop loss into profit so that you can protect your profit. So I'm going to show you all that on this slides here. Okay, so stop losses, right? This is your risk that you're taking. Every, every investment has a risk. Even you guys taking and investing in yourselves to do this trading, you took the biggest risk, right? Because you had no idea what this Forex stuff was. You didn't know if you'd be able to learn it, but you took a risk. So now the next, the next risk you're going to get into is going to be, you know, the dollar amount that you put into it. You, you, you put your education in, right? You put in the work, and now you're risking a little bit of money for an opportunity that's going to gain you, right? So look, if this was the buy, imagine you getting in here, you've seen this area of resistance, you're like, hmm, I think I should get in here because it's broke through. Well, this is your stop loss because you're like, here's the next level where price met. And you could have taken this up. I mean, who knows where you would have put your top, uh, take profit really, but take this all the way up. So whatever the, dis the distance is between that high there and there is your, um, the benefit the, that you get that risk to reward. That's your reward, okay? Um, so this shows you how you can um, move your stop loss, adjust your stop loss into profit so you can protect your profits as the price goes in the route that you expected it to. So when you initially get in, you're here, you're like, oh, I'm buying this up. It gets up to here, move your stop loss, 
again, you're just modifying it. If you're doing it on the app, um, I mean, on the on the laptop from the desktop, MetaTrader desktop, you can actually grab that stop loss and move it. I like that. It's a really cool feature. Um, so you, this is getting it back into just your entry point, though. That's not really going to help. You might have just lost benefit, but at least you ain't going to go on to, to a negative. But if you do see um, that you're getting pretty far up and you want to just get some of it, you can just move your stop loss here, right? Then at least you know for sure if the price comes back down, boom, you still at least took that in profit from here to here, right? From here to here. You're gonna, their stop loss is gonna say, okay, I've still made this profit, but I'm no longer gonna lose any of that profit from here to here, okay? Does that make sense, uh, stop losses? I have a quick question. Yes. Um, so my biggest thing when I'm looking at it is how much time do I, because it just kind of goes on and on and on. So how far back am I looking? I'm looking for the entire day. Am I looking for when the market opened that day? Like, what am I, when I put my support and my resistance lines, how far am I going back? To make okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, on my way. So I'm going to um, pause that and I'll make sure I answer it as we go because I'm going to support and resistance next. Okay. Because uh, it is important. I mean, talking about a stop loss, the only reason why I started going into support and resistance is because that's how you pick your stop loss. Um, but we'll get into support and resistance and they'll start making a little bit more sense. Does anybody else have any questions on how to place them or adjust them? No? Okay. So yeah, let's move on then. Um, well, it's terrible time. Yeah, let's, I'm gonna come back to candlesticks since we already here. We talking about support and resistance. Uh, let's do it then. So Support and resistance. Um, I also have something on here talking about time frames that you look in. So I'm gonna start from support and resistance. You wanna look for historic highs and lows in the market uh, or peaks and valleys, okay? Peaks and valleys. So here's our peaks, here's our valleys. Wherever you see a peak, you're looking at an area of resistance, especially if you see it happen multiple times where it's hitting that area. So you can do this on any time frame. You can start from the daily if you want to. You can work your way down to the hourly. I always suggest just start at hour, and then when you go to enter, you're looking at the 15 minutes. You don't really need to add more areas, but you can just to be for certain. Um, but I would say on the hour is the best place to place your resistance and your support. And when it comes to going, if you're saying like going back in time, you can go back as far as you want to place it from where you are in time, right? So you may be in today at 1500 hours or something, place it based on that. And then just look back, look back in time. Just keep scrolling back. You're going to see it hit multiple times. You're going to see it hit from the bottom. It's going to come here. You know what I mean? It's going to be, um, you know, this is considered resistance because price is coming up to this area and it's resisting it like a ceiling. They call it price ceilings, right? And this is the price is going down and then it gets stuck here because this is the support or the floor. Price goes, mm, I'm rejecting from there and it rejects off. So it's super important that we understand where price is going to reverse, right? And if it's not gonna reverse from there, then it's going to break through it. So it's either gonna break through the floor or break through the ceiling. And if it breaks through that ceiling or it breaks through that floor, then we're expecting that to continue up into a buy or down into a sale to the next level of what? Support or resistance. So you have to understand where your support and resistance is on your um, chart in order to even begin trading, right? I mean, if you don't know where price action will happen, well, then you're getting in anywhere in the market and it could be doing anything. Um, so that definitely helps you with your entries. It helps you with your exits. This is your entry, that's your exit, or this is your entry and that's your exit. So support and resistance. The other part of, of this is gonna be, and you can find other areas. So like, if you start to get down, let's say this is the hour time frame, right? 
But then you go down into the 15 and all of a sudden you're noticing that this little one that you saw here is a lot bigger. And you're like, okay. And it's actually been multiple places maybe that it had hit. So you go ahead and mark that one up as an area of resistance or support as well. Those words are interchangeable. Okay. So it says resistance over here, it says support over there. The only reason why it's resistance over here versus the support is because this is where price came up to. This is where price came down. It's the same line, same area, same zone. Now, we talked about this last week. Shanika, have you been doing it, but putting the zone on there instead of the lines? Um, this The zone. Show me on your picture. I've been, still, I've been putting the uh, support and resistance lines. It says like lines. a horizontal line. So what I was explaining is that you could do it more of like a rectangle, right? That way you can grab wicks and oh. other areas. Um, you can expand it and then you can say, okay, this is my zone of resistance and support or like my supply zone. And I'll show you that in the next, uh, the next slides. I do that during um, the consolidation times. Oh, that's a good way. Time. Yeah, definitely need to do it during when it's consolidating. The price seems to be staying in that same zone and you want to wait for it to break out. Um, but you can also keep, I'm talking about smaller rectangles, right, that are... Um, that are gonna give you wicks and in certain areas where it might not, you know what I mean, where resistance is gonna be happening at. So um, I would say definitely utilize that if you can. Okay, thank you. My air conditioner just got fixed, y'all. I'm hot. Do I look hot? I feel hot. Sticky. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> needed that okay so yeah so then the other thing is going to be you want to know your trend lines so support resistance trend you'll hear srt a lot these are the foundations um the trend line you need to go you can mark that up it's just a um as a diagonal line and it's going to go from higher high, from lower high to higher high or right those are going to be higher high to higher high higher high right you just take your line and take it down it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't waste your time trying to make a perfect trend line hit all the tops of every single peak. That's a waste of time, okay? Is the price going up or is it going down? That's kind. Of, that's the only thing that you really need to know because um, I know that that might be something that you're like, oh, I need to figure out this trend line. No, you just if you go from a higher high to another higher high, even if you miss these two, you know darn well it's going up, right? That's the trend line. The trend is upwards. Um, the reason why you need to know the trend is so important because I like to always say trade the trend. The trend is always going to give you longer stretches of profits, right, than the correction. The correction is going to give you a lower, because uh, basically when it corrects, it's just price is kind of coming down and it's going to continue on. And it's either bullish direction, which is an uptrend, or it's bearish direction. Okay, so in that in this sense, always go to a higher time frame, whether it be an hour, two hour, four hour, go to the day and look at the in the chart for the last year or the last two years, three years. Hell, you can go for five years. It doesn't really matter. We just want to know how long has it been in a downtrend or how long has it been in this uptrend or is this a recent uptrend? Or maybe this is just a correction because in reality, it's been in a downtrend for some time. So trade the trend, trade the overall trend. Remember that, trade the overall trend. Um, this is just showing you that what will happen is you're going to find points of resistance in that trend line, okay? That trend line that you plot is also its own levels of resistance and support going in a horizontal way, but this is more in a diagonal way. It's saying, okay, every time price gets there, it goes there and it pulls back. It'll go there and then it pulls back, right? Or it's coming down and it's pull and then it's pulling back. So just remember that the trend line can be its own level of support and resistance when you're looking at um, where price might go next. All right. So this is what I was just, uh, just talking about, though. So whereas when you were talking about a consolidation, you're probably going to make a bigger rectangle that takes a certain area where it's just, you know, 
Like this is kind of a consolidation zone right here or something like that. Not necessarily, but something like it. Um, but when I was speaking of creating larger uh, lines, instead of just using a line, because sometimes the line might be off, this gives you more areas of possibility where price will go. So it's like supply zones and demand zones. This is where all the, the supply zone means the sellers are going to be ramping up to sell in this area. Demand zone means there's a lot of buyers down in this area ready to buy. That's what's taking that price up. Sellers are bringing it down. Okay. So it's a lot of supply up here, a lot of demand down here. So support and resistance. Um, the points at which price trends uh, reach a temporary limit and either reverse or continue in the direction of the original trend, the original trend. Um, why do prices reach this limit? Because the demand has increased above the supply or the supply has increased over the demand. So if you uh, hated economics back in college or high school or whatever, you may, be, may have taken it, go back to it because it's going to help you with uh, Forex trading a lot on a micro and macro economic level. Um, supply and demand is what moves the market prices. It's the reason why we're looking at a chart. So at its basic sense, definitely try and understand that. Um, let me go back some because... We did skip the candlesticks and I don't want to skip those. Does that support, does that answer your question on support and resistance and, and where we should be looking at that? Yes. Okay, because I'm going to go over chart timeframes in a minute, but the support and resistance, um, okay. So candlesticks, the body of each candlestick represents the buyers and the sellers orders in the market at a specific time and price. So the body of each candlestick represents buyers and sellers orders in the market at a specific time and price. So depending on what time frame you're on, you're looking at the open and the closing prices. So when you see a flat top here or a flat top bottom, these are your opens and your closes. Okay. That's where prices either opening and closing at. When you see a wick, this is where price fluctuated to within that time frame, but did not open or close in that place. Okay. So it, it means that there's orders probably still out there. They're kind of like pending. It just, it lets you know that price could possibly go back to that area too. It's also an indication that maybe price is getting ready to change. You know, it could be getting ready to go into a different way. Um, so always look at those wicks. Um, because the wicks matter and the body of the candlestick matters. This helps us. I'm looking for whether or not the body of the candlestick is going over my area of support and resistance. But I also look to see did the wick, because even if it just wicked into my area of support or resistance, it's a possibility it can go back to that area. Um, so definitely uh, pay attention to uh, these candlesticks and understand these candlesticks. Um, these uh, bullish candles are going to be uptrends. I mean, it's an increased buyer demand. We all know that if the buyer's demand is going up, that's what's driving the prices up, um, especially if there's not enough supply there for it. Okay. Right. So if the buyers are buying it all up. The supply is depleting. The prices are going up. Bearish candles, downtrend. So it's increased seller supply driving the prices down right so whenever uh the store has some overstock on something right they the uh they're gonna say okay this is gonna we're gonna cut the price right we're gonna cut the price on this so we can get more people to buy this right this is gonna be the decision making they know that buyers make buyers and sellers make these decisions every day on whether or not they're gonna buy or sell depending on if that's a price that they want so knowing that they have all this oversupply, right? They're like, okay, to get rid of this, we bring these prices down to get rid of this supply. So it's the same thing with this price. Uh, when you're talking about these orders for these currency pairs, uh, if that price is too high, um, 
it's, it's probably because there's a lot of buyers demanding it. If it's starting to come down, just know that there's an increased supply. They found they couldn't find enough buyers at the price that they were at, so they're coming down, okay? Candlesticks, let me go over these just for a second, although I hate going over these ones. Um, these just let you know that no one wins, okay? This is not, the, it's not a bull's win, it's not a bear's win. No one wins, but what it does let you know is a clue to tell you that there's a reversal that may be close by. The bottoming tails are a clue that buyers have taken control. So maybe you can be expecting a buy reversal, right? If you see a topping tail, include that the sellers have taken control. So maybe that reversal that's close by is a sale. I think the candlesticks have a lot to do too, which uh, with which candlestick they're next to. Yes, you know, absolutely. Like if you go to, um, so there's like engulfing candles as well. I don't have that on here, but the engulfing candles. Um, check out Wicks Matter by Oren Wright. He has a, a recording that uh, I like, and he really goes into these wicks. He goes into certain little fingers and stuff that you can see. Um, Tion will tell you about the 25 to life. Um, you'll find a lot of little details about the candlesticks that will help you in determining price action. Okay. Now, the what we use in the mornings on the SK5 is Hakanashi candles. I have not talked about those on here. I usually leave that for Luther when he goes over how to set up the SK5, but please keep in mind that has that will take none of this matters, okay? If you're talking about Hakanashis. This this is price action candlesticks. Hakanashi is talking about momentum. So keep that in mind, momentum. Where is the momentum at a certain point in time? Um, not how many orders, it doesn't have a volume associated with it or anything like that, okay? So that's the candlesticks, bodies, and wicks. Um, you'll find a lot of educators talking about it, but I, I just said the wicks matter because I it sticks out to me that that's one of the ones that I, I utilize when I'm um, trading. I, I remember that one specifically. So I'm going to go back this way. This is just a nice little chart that shows you um, this was like a strong level of support and that's where that reversal happened at, right? So I, you would want to mark that up, right? That same level though, if you would have done it over here, that same level hits over here, right? So again, you can just continue going back as far as you want to to look at it, but you're going to start becoming more certain that when you place that level of support and resistance there, that's where it is. Like after seeing it so many times that you're placing it right, and that's why I say go in and mark up your charts um, with support and resistance lines for this next week. Just start getting comfortable with all the different levels of support and resistance that you can find. You don't have to be perfect. If you're um, wondering if you did it correctly, take a picture of it, screenshot it or something and send it in the group chat. Somebody's gonna tell you whether or not they think it looks right or not or if you maybe you need to move this or take that. I'm gonna be honest, as long as you mark it up off of peaks and <laughs> peaks and valleys, there's no way anyone's gonna tell you you're wrong because it's trivial. I mean, it's just, did the price hit that area or not? You know, did it come up to that area in reverse multiple times? So um, here's a channel though. I think we were talking about consolidation. This is like a, a consolidation channel, right? I wouldn't really wanna get into this. Wait till it break out of that. So that's what you're just talking about. Putting those trend lines in when you're doing like channels. Okay. So just keep that in mind. This is a trend line here. You see how that's not perfect. No one's trying to make sure it hits every single little area. You're just like, eh, we're going to go from here to here. Look at this one from here to here. I mean, it didn't hit every single place. It's not going to. That's not the point. The point is to say, is it is my line going down or is my line coming up? Look at this one. Boom. Is my line going down or is it coming up? It's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't waste your time trying to make perfect trend lines and perfect support and resistance. Everybody has their own levels 
that's why when I was talking to Fox earlier, we were talking about TPs and he had his TP, I had my TP. We both are expecting around the same exact area, but it's no telling where he put his line at, right? Okay, so now that we've gotten past that, let's talk chart time frames. I really say you gotta look at this from a top-down analysis, okay? You need to start with your monthly, weekly, daily, hour, Start from the top, especially if you've never looked at that chart. Pick your favorite charts. I've said that before. Pick your favorite charts. Get three solid charts that you follow no matter what session, right? No matter what session, that's your, your three charts. And when you do, you may not even need to keep going back up to the monthly or weekly because or the daily because you know what that chart is doing. You know for a fact that this has been in a downtrend for the last couple months. As you guys are in it for longer and longer, you're gonna be like, I know this because I've been looking at this forever, right? So you know what the trade. When you go in, it's a little bit faster for you because that's the chart you already look at. You don't even have to look at some of these other levels. You just go down to your hour, four hour, and you start to to uh, figure out what your move is gonna be. So you want again overall trend or momentum. You want to mark your key levels of support and resistance. We're not gonna do this, I forgot, but um, look at your moving averages, right? Are the moving averages crossing or not? I'll send out the video that I had, I think we sent it out last week, but go ahead and get your EMA set up. Um, if these are these crosses will help you with identifying when price action. And so you can do that on multiple different levels of time too. Um, on your four hour to your one hour, you wanna be looking for your setup or looking for a pattern, okay? When I say looking for your setup, saying, okay, where am I gonna enter? How am I gonna enter? Where is this price going? I would not enter, but where is this price going? That's your setup. Where is this price going? What type of pattern do I see? So when I say patterns, like, you looking for something like this on your hour, four hour. You see a head and shoulders. Do you see a cup and handle? Do you see a flag? Do you see a continuation? Um, some of the, the more common ones that you will see is going to be that head and shoulders pattern. Uh, you may see a harmonic pattern. Well, if you see a harmonics tool, that obviously is always going to be a, a pattern of some sort. So um, 15 minutes or less, this is going to be your entry. You're going to enter on a 15 minute time frame or less. You want to look there to figure out exactly what price um, you want to enter at, um, exactly what stop loss you want, and exactly where your take profit is going to be on on, a, on that level. Okay, so uh, any questions on the chart time frames? Have you guys been struggling with understanding what chart time frame to be on? There's a lot of chart time frames on harmonics. Is there any questions on the time frames? I have none. Okay, y'all. Y'all must be amazing. Nice. I know some of y'all newer, so y'all probably haven't even looked at this stuff yet. All right, so talked about this last weekend. I mean, last week, and I've left it on here for this week for everybody new. Um, you're going to take some losses, uh, learn from those lessons. I call them lessons. You're going to take a lot of profits, and uh, I call those blessings. So learn from your lessons and be grateful for the blessings. Um, definitely be grateful for the for the blessings because uh, it could easily be gone. And we are in a we're in a great place here to be learning something at this time that uh, I never knew that I would I would learn or, or be able to capitalize off of making my money uh, make money. So definitely be so grateful for this for this time and place that we're in. Um, I have nothing else. I will tell you, you can get this. You need to have this. This is on my background for my uh, computer. Tradingspine.com. You can just search this, though. Just put Forex chart patterns in Google, and boom, you'll see this same exact chart. This helps a lot when uh, like, we're looking at our charts and we see something. Because you're not going to be able to always identify patterns. Um, but when you do see it, oh, it feels good, right? Because you're like, man, I know exactly what's going to happen next. So, um, does anybody have any questions for me? 
Y'all give it up for Quan Nice, y'all. Listen, y'all give it up for her. That was excellent. Hey, let's, hey. let's let's drop some tens in the chat because that's what she did. Uh, one out of ten, she gave y'all tens tonight. Y'all understand that all this information is going to make y'all better traders. Absolutely. Man, I understand. Some of y'all, this is new. This is new. Y'all only been doing this for an hour, Latoya. <laughs> right. Like an hour, she's probably looking like, <laughs> like what is she talking about? <laughs> uh, but that's okay. We got you. We're gonna launch you to Toya tomorrow. Gonna make sure that you're good. Check your email because I did send you some stuff to help you get started. And uh, Andrew, Andrew, you're our guest tonight as well. So what do you think, Andre? Andrew, did I say it correct, Mr. West? Wake up, Mr. Push, West, Mr. West. Gotta push, Mr. West. Gotta push the mute button. Gotta push the mute button. It's yeah. okay. All right. Maybe he's, maybe he's still looking for it. Okay. So, uh, hey, yeah. Listen, you man, you're fantastic, Juanice. I'm talking about like master educator, master trader. Man, you're like you're like uh, a superhero. Uh, <laughs> no, don't blow my head up. <laughs> oh man, but thank listen, you. Listen. I appreciate it. Listen, I am not a hype man at all. I don't, hype, <laughs> I don't hype anybody unless I see that you are like really, really doing some dope stuff. So, hey, listen, like you are really, really doing it. So, thank you so much. Thank and you. Thank everybody else too who joined tonight. Yeah, um, I, I know appreciate we're, we're a little, we're a little bearish tonight. Um, maybe people are doing some other things, but usually we have about 20, 30 people on these training calls. But it's, it's all good, right? Um, as the family keep growing, as we keep profiting, as we keep Building Shanika's Shanika, you live yet? I know she ready. I'm still demo. I'm I'm pacing myself. Okay, you wanted to jump in like double judge this morning, huh? Like all that all that money was being made. <laughs> That's what I it's like, gonna be there. It's gonna it be is. there. I keep telling myself that I don't wanna I promise I don't wanna lose no, you know. I don't wanna it jump in prematurely. Yep, yeah, because sharks do bite. All right. Um, Thank you so, guys. I'm pretty sure the goat has something to say. Mm -mm. Y'all did an outstanding job. I was running other calls. Your hair look good. Calls, but you did an outstanding job. Hey. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> thank you. You did an outstanding job. Thank you, thank you. I'm excited you. to see what's going to happen with everybody, though. But this Wednesday night, every Wednesday night, new traders get locked in on this. This is where the values is. Values are. Let me correct myself. Value is. <laughs> but make sure everybody lock into this if you're new do it again next week keep doing it every week until it becomes a second language this is the foundations the principles that everybody need all right yep yes right. yes well thank you guys for joining me I'll, uh, I did record this so I'm gonna uh, um, drop it in the chat <laughs>